All right, so now we're going to describe in detail one of the motivating uh, examples uh, in this uh, course, uh, which is the eigenvalue problem. Um, so a bit of a notation. So we're going to have f. It's like it's going to denote a field, uh, and in particular, it could be the real complex. So it could be R or the complexes, uh, and then we have a matrix A, which is a n by n matrix with entries in either the real complexes. Okay, which again I denote by f. Okay. So, um, so any non-vanishing vector uh, v in C n satisfying a v is equal to lambda v uh, for some lambda in the complexes, right, is called an eigen uh, vector. Of A, right, with an associated eigenvalue. Lambda. Okay, so that's fairly standard. Okay, uh, and then of course the pair lambda v, right, is called an eigenpair. And then the set of uh, eigenvalues of A is the spectrum. you know that the eigenvalues of A, it's like our zeros, uh, roots of the characteristic polynomial. as P of A, it depends on Z, it's just the determinant of A minus Z times the identity, okay, and uh, the algebraic multiplicity so of their algebraic multiplicity is uh, just their multiplicity as zeros of P A. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, and then there are some uh, transformation properties. Okay. an invertible matrix right and uh, lambda V is an icon pair of a uh, then if you do a similarity transform of a um,
which takes A and maps it to T A T inverse, right? Right, as an eigenpair, which is uh, the same eigenvalue, uh, but it's T times the eigenvector. Okay. Uh, and, and you can sort of see this uh, just by um, sort of fairly in a fairly straightforward way, right? So if you have A times V is equal to lambda V, that's the defining property that A is an eigenpair, right? Then uh, I can multiply on the left and right um, by T, right? So I have A T V is equal to T lambda v, um, but lambda is a scalar, so I can take it to the left, so lambda tv. All right, so I want to think of tv now as an eigenvector. All right, so, so this, is, this is not what I want, but this is of course nothing more than ta, and I'm going to put uh, t inverse t here, which is of course the identity matrix v. All right, so this is, uh, this is fine, so now I have tv here. And then this, of course, implies that uh, lambda and TV, right, is an eigenpair of the matrix uh, T, A, T inverse. Right. <coughs> okay. Um, so, so then let's talk about uh, linear subspaces. So a linear subspace, sometimes uh, the linear is emitted and one just refers to subspace. Uh, and this is sort of understood because when we talk about spaces, we're talking about uh, vector spaces in this setting, right? So when you say a subspace, it basically means that it's a subset which is still a vector space so in particular it has to be a linear vector space a linear subspace so a subspace s of f to the n right is a subset of fn that is closed uh, under linear combinations mean by that is that if I take uh, two vectors in S, right, so that means for all x and y in S, and all possible um, scalar, uh, sort of, um, <coughs> all possible coefficients in the fields, right, so all A and B in F, right, then this combination, this linear combination A times x plus B times y, Right, is still in S. Okay, so this is what is meant by, um, you know, this set S uh, is closed under linear combinations. These are linear combinations of things in S. Right. Okay. Uh, then the set. Yeah. This is the idea of a linear subspace. set, uh, let's say, y1 to yn of elements of S, right, such that uh, every element of S um, can be written as a linear combination <coughs> of these uh, set elements in the sets. is called a spanning set. Okay, 
office. Um, so it doesn't have to be a basis because uh, there could be situations where there's uh, a, a non-trivial relationship. It's like between the elements. Uh, all, all we're saying is that you know if you take these elements and you take all possible linear combinations, you will get S, right? Um, so it's more like a frame than it is a basis, if you will. Okay. Um, so. So that's a spanning set. Let me say that S uh, is the column space. Or simply uh, the span. Of this uh, N by P matrix. Y, okay, viewed as Y1 to YP. Okay, so you think of, you know, literally it's like, you know, P of these. Okay, so you have an N by P matrix and you think of them as P vectors, right? Of, uh, and each vector is uh, an N vector, right? And you want to look at the, uh, the space which is spanned, it's like by these columns. Okay, so, um, so that's quite natural. that uh, y spans uh, s, okay? All right. So you denote this by saying that uh, s is the span of y, okay? Which is a set of uh, y multiply by x, where x is a, a p-vector um, with values in the field, okay? All right. So if you think about this, what, what's really happening here is that you're writing down, um, so if you imagine x is uh, x1 to xp, right, then y acting on x It's nothing more than x1, y1, so xp, yp, right? Which is which exactly, it's like this idea of the span. Or, well, this is sort of an arbitrary linear combination if you allow x to vary over uh, f to the p, right? Okay, and then, so I can also write this as uh, y times fp, right? Okay, so, sort of on the side. So we say that matrix Y is uh, full column rank, right? When the columns Y are linearly independent. Okay, so this is basically saying that Y times X is equal to zero, right? If and only if uh, X is the zero vector in FP. Okay. Um, then, okay, so if y spans s and has full rank, right, then uh, the columns of y actually then are a basis. Okay. Um. 
So any two bases for S, right, have the same number of elements. And the number of those elements, of course, just the dimension of S. a vector space. Okay, so the set of all um, p-dimensional subspaces of Fn, right, is called the Grossmannian is denoted by Gross uh, Pn. Um, and, and this is going to be an ongoing uh, sort of uh, space which we're going to be working with it uh, throughout this course. Uh, and it's called Grossmannian manifold. Grossmann manifold. Okay. Right. So the kernel of the matrix. kernel of B, right, and is the subspace of vectors x uh, such that V times x is equal to zero. Okay, all right, so a scalar Lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if the dimension of the kernel of this operator A minus lambda times the identity is greater than zero. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, then that's the eigenspace associated uh, with the eigenvalue lambda. And if so, that kernel <coughs> is the eigenspace A, right, uh, related to the eigenvalue lambda. Okay. All right. So now let's say something about invariant subspaces. So a n by n matrix, a naturally induces a mapping on Grassmannians. Okay, and the mapping is that given S in the Grassmannian, Okay, you get mapped to uh, A times S, right? So it's the set of AY such that uh, Y is in S. Okay, um, 
So a subspace S is said to be an invariant subspace. space okay of a um, if um, a s is contained in s okay so if uh, given that subspace you have a acting on it you stay within uh, the original subspace s then there's a sense in which that subspace is invariant under the action of a on uh, the Grassmannians Okay, so that's quite natural. <coughs> okay, so then you can talk about the restriction. Uh, A restricted to S, right, of A, right, is I should say S is invariant. Right. Is the operator X gets mapped to A of X, right, whose domain is Okay, uh, and then because of the fact that uh, S is an invariant subspace, this is a map from S to S in some sense. Uh, so I should say A restricted S is a map from S to S. Okay. Um, so an invariant subspace. S of A. It's called spectral. Okay, if uh, every eigenvalue um, lambda of A restricted to S. for every the multiplicity of lambda uh, as an eigenvalue of the restriction right is the same and uh, as an eigenvalue of the full operator identical. Uh, this is more or less a fancy way of saying that uh, when you have these invariant subspaces you're capturing it's like all the um, you know it's like um, <coughs> um, well the full eigenspace associated with the uh, eigenvalue lambda, right? So you could have multiple eigenvalues that's like associated with these uh, invariant subspaces, but you have to have all of the same value in that uh, subspace. And if you do, then it's called uh, a spectral uh, invariant subspace. Okay, so this is equivalent to the following. So let's say you have x transpose a x and uh, x transpose <coughs> perp a x perp. Okay, so these are two matrices, have uh, no eigenvalues in common. 
when uh, where you have this decomposition of the matrix into two pieces, which satisfies So you have this condition and the span of x uh, is s, okay? So this is basically saying the following, right? So let's say, so you can think of this uh, as being, um, you know, it's like the set of, um, let's say it's like basis vectors, it's like for s, and then you sort of fill in um, the, um, it's like this part x perp, it's like by the other, um, so that, you know, x and x perp together form a basis for the full space, okay? Uh, and in particular, it's like uh, that, say, there are uh, autonormal bases, all right? So if you have that condition that they're autonormal bases, then these basically are the restrictions of um, the operator A, it's like to the space S, and to sort of the complementary space, if you will, all right? Um, and so, you, you know, it's like basically what's happening again is that you don't want a situation where if you have an eigenvalue lambda, part of it shows up here and part of it shows up here, right? So this uh, is basically saying that when you, in some sense, restrict, it's like to the space associated with S and to its sort of perpendicular, com sort of complementary uh, subspace, well, not complementary space, uh, the sort of the orthogonal complement, if you will, it's like to S, right, that these two operators then don't have the same eigenvalues. Okay, so that's that's basically what's happening here. Okay, um, so I should say that uh, in practice, you know, most of the time this matrix A uh, is real valued and it's symmetric. Uh, and the reason why that case is of particular interest is because then uh, obviously it's like you have a complete set of uh, eigenvectors, right? And um, so in sort of many cases, right, A is real and symmetric. Symmetric just means that A is equal to A transpose. And the eigenvalues of A are also real. Uh, and I'm going to order them. Lambda 1 less than or equal to lambda 2, lambda n. And the associated <coughs> eigenvectors, let's say V1 to Vn, are real as well and can be chosen to be a token. that vi transpose vj is equal to Kronecker delta function, delta ij, which is one if i is equal to j, and zero if i is not equal to j. So another way to think about this is that equivalently, right, for every sort of real symmetric matrix, A, right, there exists an, uh, an autonormal matrix 
V, right? Who, whose columns are really just the eigenvectors, right? such that uh, A is just V um, lambda V transpose, right? And uh, lambda is just this diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues. Okay, so the eigenvalue And I guess I should also say that uh, V is just this thing here, V1 to Vn. Okay, so the eigenvalue lambda 1 is the leftmost eigenvalue of A. Uh, and the pair lambda 1 V1 is the leftmost eigenpair. And then uh, we can also talk about the p dimensional leftmost invariant subspace. Can also talk about the p dimensional. leftmost invariant subspace. Which is the invariant subspace which is associated with lambda 1 to lambda p. sort of fairly natural, p-dimensional leftmost invariant subspace. Uh, and then similarly, you can have the rightmost uh, things, and then the extreme uh, eigenspaces are the left and rightmost. most um, icon space and invariant subspace. Then the extreme eigenspaces are the left and rightmost uh, eigenspaces. And then finally, is there's this idea of uh, matrix pencils, which is also sort of closely related. So, uh, so if you're given two uh, n by n matrices, uh, let's call them A and B, right? Then lambda v is an eigenpair of the pencil. A b, if the following is true, if 
uh, a times v is equal to lambda b v. Right, so this is a generalization, if you will. It's like of the uh, the eigenvalue problem. So finding eigenpairs of matrix pencils. It's uh, known as the generalized eigenvalue problem. then this is uh, said to be symmetric positive definite. If A is symmetric, then B is symmetric positive definite. Positive definite here just means that uh, x transpose b, x is greater than or equal to zero for all x which is not equal to zero. Uh, and then in that situation, right, so if you recall, if you had symmetric real valued A, right, you had, uh, <coughs> you had um, that the um, eigenvectors and eigenvalues were real valued and so something similar happens here so if you have a symmetric positive definite matrix pencil where A is symmetric and B is symmetric positive definite uh, then the eigenvalues of the pencil can be chosen uh, to be what's called B autonomal or B autonomal. What that means is that uh, if you have um, VI transpose B V J, this is the Kronecker delta I J. Okay, uh, so of course, um, a limited case of the matrix pencil case is where B is the identity matrix that obviously reduces the generalized eigenvalue problem to the usual eigenvalue problem. And then uh, if, yeah, if this B was the identity that reduces to the usual notion of autonormal. Okay. Um, All right, and then uh, let me just say one last thing about these generalized uh, invariant subspaces. Uh, and that sort of will set up the problem. It's like for um, the eigenvalue problem as an optimization problem. Okay, so a subspace Y is called generalized uh, invariant subspace or deflating space okay um, of this sort of symmetric positive definite pencil. A, B, 
be. Okay, if uh, B inverse A Y is in the subspace Y for all uh, little y in Y. Okay, so you can also write this obviously as B inverse A Y is contained in Y. Uh, or that a y is contained in b y. So as uh, as before, it's like these subspaces. It's like can be obtained by looking at the spans um, of the you know eigenvectors associated with uh, eigenvalues of uh, the pencil. Okay. All right. So. Uh, and of course, this reduces it's like to the, the usual thing we're familiar with if B is the identity matrix as before. So, so this is just some sort of notation, if you will. It's like uh, for dealing with uh, the eigenvalue problem um, and the generalization, it's like to matrix pencils. Uh, so the next thing we'll talk about is how to frame uh, the eigenvalue problem uh, in terms of an optimization problem. Okay, so let me just stop here.